back in a while. Okay. okay. So, first, we'd like to thank you for giving this interview and compliment you for your recent election as CEDAW Chair. Thank you. And, uh, well, we are here discussing mainly how can libraries, archives and museums link their information and work together and exchange their data, their data regarding to do difference um, and content materials. Regardless of that difference in context, museums and archives and libraries share a common challenge, which is the organization and diffusion of information for professionals and specialized users, as well as multiple publics. Do you think that CDOC CRM can be the answer to those problems related with the change of data between uh, libraries, museums and archives? And is CDOC preparing the next steps in the standard development towards this collaboration? Okay, I think the CDOC CRM is an element of response. It's not the answer mm -hmm. on its own. It won't, uh, it won't change very much. If uh, you know, people don't do the work, if they won't use it, then it's not going to help. But it was developed in that, with that intention in mind. I think there's a common misconception about the CDOC CRM that it's restricted to the museum field. Uh, and that's partly because it came out of work with museums, but it has extended to cover the library field and the archive world as well. So it is intended as a, a model that should enable integration of information from all three fields and indeed other cultural heritage sectors. Uh, there is work going on with uh, CDOC CRM to create extensions. Now the uh, one of them which my colleague Patrick Leboeuf was talking about is FRBR 00 which is an extension of for the library world coming from IFLA and we've got similar work uh, being going on extending the CR CRM to, it, to make it appropriate and usable in other sectors. So it does require some, some investment, some investment, yes. Um, what are we doing in CDOC? I mean we're also, uh, apart from the CRM, we're also trying to encourage to create links with other organizations. Um, that's, uh, that's a long Yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that's going to take time. Yeah, and mm. that brings me to my second question, is how is, how is CEDOC facing cooperation with other international institutions like SHIN, like the Getty mm. Trust, uh, Collections Trust, and for instance, the recent MIP work group is a sign of institutional collaboration with uh, the UK, with Spectrum. How mm. this will work? Uh, can we hope for a broader international Operation standards in that matter. Yeah, I mean, CDOC is the only, so far as I know, CDOC is the only international organization dealing with uh, documentation standards. Of course, we work with these other organizations. We've worked a lot with the Getty Foundation and the Getty Trust and um, with, uh, with CHIN as well and with the Collections Trust. We have a very good, close relationship. Many of our members. Uh, work for and come from uh, national organizations so there's a, there's a very close working uh, relationship which we're keen to to foster um, one of the difficulties I'd say we have is that CDOC is entirely based on uh, voluntary membership people come to CDOC and work in CDOC because they're interested because they're, very often they're, they're just passionate about museum documentation and they will talk about it endlessly. So we, uh, we are a forum, an international forum for these people, but they all come from their national perspective. And the advantage of the national organizations very often is that they have more, um, more substantial funding and uh, they, they are able to, uh, to go ahead with projects that we, we would like to develop, but we just don't have the resources to be able to, to, um, to go much further. Now as far as um, international standards are concerned, that does create some problems because very often we, we find ourselves looking at standards that have been developed at a national level and then we uh, find that we have to internationalize them yeah. to take out things that are tr too specific to certain legal constraints or a financial um, situation. 
and uh, in a way it would be preferable if we could develop international standards that were neutral uh, with respect to national uh, situations, circumstances, finances and legal frameworks and they could then be made uh, specific to the national, national circumstances. Unfortunately, for practical reasons, that's just not the case. <laughs> um, and that uh, privileged international viewpoint gives you an idea of what's happening worldwide. So what's the, what are the main concerns worldwide? What are the big differences between developed countries and undeveloped countries in regards of uh, museum documentation? What, how does CIDOC as an international body that and how can it help to yeah. uh, reduce a gap if there is a gap? Uh, yes, I mean there definitely is a, a big gap and there are some interesting uh, separations between the continents. The situation in Europe is quite different to the situation in North America in some respects and that's partly because of, uh, for historical reasons and also because of the way that museums have developed. Um, in, uh, in Europe and in, the, in North America, say. Um, the existence, I mean, a lot of institutions in Europe are government funded or funded by city municipal funding. That's relatively rare in the United States, for instance, where funding tends to be from private foundations. And that difference of, that, that's a key difference and it has an impact on the way standards are perceived and used and the sorts of things that are possible. So that something like Europeana, for instance, is difficult to imagine in the United States. Um, But do you find that mm. uh, public funding is better for international, for the use of standards and uh, private funding not as well? Not necessarily, it's just different. Mm. Um, the, there's a, there is an impact. Uh, when you have a very controlled, centralized authority, um, then it's possible to impose standards. Uh, that's the case, for instance, in China. Uh, we had our triennial ICOM conference in um, China a few years ago and it became clear that many of the museums, most of the museums we u visited were using exactly the same software because it had been developed for museums by a central authority. So a lot of the problems we had of harmonizing, exchanging data just simply didn't exist because it had been imposed uh, centrally. That was a huge advantage from their point of view. Um, You can, however, I believe, create market conditions uh, which will lead to standardization, the adoption of standards, because there's a mutual interest in having standards. If you look at the motor industry, for instance, today you buy a car manufactured in Japan, China, the United States, or in Germany, the controls are all the same. Uh, it doesn't require, uh, you know, that standardization has occurred spontaneously because of the needs of the customers and the f needs of the marketplace. And I think that may happen with uh, museum mm. documentation as well. That you're talking about Europe, North America, China, mm. and what about the others? The there are, of course, there's another huge problem in um, uh, many developing countries that they Don't have, they don't have the digital uh, resources that we have had and in some cases that means that they're still working with uh, paper documentation. Um, that's actually not entirely a bad thing. Paper does have some advantages. You know, Low-tech solutions can be very good and in CDOC uh, we're very concerned about supporting the entire spectrum of documentation. Uh, documentation practices and technology. You know, paper is just a different technology and we used it in Europe uh, right up until the 1960s and in many places uh, well beyond. Um, so uh, I think it's, it's important to, uh, to recognize that. Um, now I think one of the... Uh, there, there's, there's, a, um, there's a possible advantage for developing nations to leapfrog over some of the problems that we've had. Uh, if you look at the history of um, computing technology used in museums, from the 1960s through the 1980s, the arrival of internet, we have a huge legacy of past systems uh, and, uh, and data to deal with. And migrating that, maintaining it, and keeping it up to date is, is a lot of work in itself. And it, it's, it's rather like uh, the problem with uh, the telephone network. If you can avoid the stage of having copper cabling everywhere in the cities and just jump directly 
into um, wireless technology, that's, um, that's an advantage. And I think um, some of the developing countries may be able to do that with their existing documentation systems and simply avoid a whole um, you know, a couple of decades of computing technology and jump into the, the contemporary situation. Um, and we're, in CDOC, we're deliberately trying to encourage people from developing countries to attend our conferences and to become members. And to that end, we're, we're doing a lot of work with the Getty Foundation, actually, to ensure that um, uh, some financial support is available. Uh, and the other way around, we're also trying to organize training programs in uh, these countries, actually going to uh, developing countries to organize uh, training programs. And do you feel um, that training mm -hmm. programs are uh, an asset to standard use and museum, uh, better museum I practice? Could, I could hardly say the opposite. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, I mean, actually, I think the, we recognized a few years ago in, uh, in CEDOC that training was, was the key. Um, that we had to have people who have a certain level of technical capacity and certain good practices that are, are recognized internationally as well. And um, so we set up a training program which we've been running for the last uh, three years now and it's, it's, it's developing. Um, this year, earlier this year, we ran uh, our first edition in non-English training program in Sao Paulo in Brazil. And next year we're hoping to do similar um, training programs, training weeks in, in other countries, possibly in some Arabic countries and in other languages as well. So the material now exists, we've got a, a methodology, a teaching method and a, and a set of material for training and this can provide uh, a sort of core basis for uh, documentation practice um, which we hope will be useful and we can, can be used and adapted to the circumstances in different countries whether the country be somewhere like Helsinki, you know, Finland, where they have masses of uh, you know, high-tech um, solutions available, or African countries where they have uh, uh, very little. Um, but um, our training program is meant to be adaptable to different circumstances. And we found it was necessary because some countries have extremely good training available. Uh, at university level and others have none at all so we decided we had to have something to, uh, to offer to be able to um, provide support for museum professionals and students internationally. Okay. Um, our group, the, the working group of uh, information systems in museum and culture emerged from the need of professionals and you know, on a daily day basis mm. we need to work with the systems what do you think these kind of groups can, can have, what kind of role they can have in this, uh, or either on the training programs or in the implementation of international standards uh, worldwide? Well, I can see two um, really important contributions. Uh, one is, uh, well, I would like groups such as yours to be part of CDOC and to come to CDOC to share your experiences because um, although the situations change in different countries, there are some common factors that are the same everywhere, and uh, sharing experiences will help other people. Um, it's something I've noticed with documentation professionals is that they always think that, things, that their, their situation is the worst possible, and that things must be much better elsewhere. And my experience is that it's not the case. Um, the grass really isn't greener in the other countries. The situation is pretty much the same. There are differences and some things are better, some things are worse. Some countries have different advantages but everybody has difficulties and problems. And we're working in a sector which is um, often underfunded, not really recognized as being as important and as vital for museums as it, as it is. So I would really like groups, um, special professional groups to come to CDOC to share their experiences and tell us uh, the, about the solutions, not just the solutions but also the problems that they've had and how they've overcome those problems. Uh, learning about other people's difficulties is immensely useful and valuable and we would like them to also to take back, take something out of CDOC, to take back the standards that we have 
uh, to use those to, uh, to help spread them and also to become trainers. Um, our training program needs trainers. We have the training material, we have the method, but we need people, we need teachers. Uh, so if people are interested in, in using our material to organize training programs, then we're, we're all for it. So, so thank you, <laughs> and we'll keep on the, the cooperation between our groups so that we can work together in a training program someday. Well, thank you very much, thank and it's been much. wonderful being here, and I uh, hope I'll be coming back soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>